Welcome back to Audiotion, where the magic and mystery of Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire continue to unfold. In this exciting part 5, we'll be diving into chapters 21 to 25, where the Triwizard Tournament reaches new heights of danger and intrigue. But before we embark on this thrilling journey, let's quickly recap part 4. We saw Harry and the other champions face the third task, an ominous maze filled with treacherous obstacles. The stakes have never been higher, and the tension is palpable as dark forces creep closer. Secrets are unraveling, friendships are tested, and the shadow of Voldemort grows more threatening by the day. Now, as we move into part five, get ready for shocking revelations, unexpected twists, and a climax that will leave you spellbound. The tournament is nearing its deadly conclusion, and nothing will ever be the same. So, grab your broomsticks and wands and let's dive into the heart of this magical adventure. Chapter 21 of Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire is titled The House Self-Liberation Front. After the second task of the Triwizard Tournament, Harry and his friends begin to focus on their studies again. However, they become concerned when they notice Hermione is working on a new project that seems to be taking up all of her time. Harry and Ron follow Hermione and discover that she has started a group called the House Self-Liberation Front, which aims to free the Hogwarts house elves from their servitude to the wizarding families. Hermione is passionate about the cause and wants to make a difference, but Harry and Ron are skeptical about the effectiveness of her methods. Meanwhile, Harry continues to investigate Moody's suspicious behavior. He is convinced that Moody is up to something, but he can't figure out what it is. He even goes to see Dumbledore, but the headmaster assures him that Moody is a trustworthy and honorable manual. As the final task of the Triwizard Tournament approaches, Harry and the other champions prepare for the most dangerous challenge yet. They are transported to a maze, where they must navigate through obstacles and avoid traps to reach the center and claim the Triwizard Cup. During the task, Harry and Cedric Diggory, the other Hogwarts champion, are attacked by Victor Crumb, who has been placed under the Imperious Curse. They manage to defeat Crumb and continue on, but they are ambushed by Barty Crouch Jr., who has been posing as Mad-Eye Moody throughout the school year. Crouch reveals that he was behind the plot to put Harry's name in the Goblet of Fire and manipulate him throughout the tournament. He also admits to being a Death Eater and reveals that Voldemort is still alive and gaining power. Harry and Cedric manage to escape from Crouch, but they are transported to a graveyard where Voldemort and his followers are waiting. Cedric is killed by Wormtail, and Voldemort orders Wormtail to use Harry's blood to restore his own body and become fully resurrected. The chapter ends with Voldemort declaring that he will kill Harry, and Harry preparing to face the greatest challenge of his life. Chapter 22 of Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire is titled The Unexpected Task. The chapter begins with Harry finding himself in the graveyard with Cedric's lifeless body beside him. Voldemort orders Wormtail to bind Harry and perform the necessary steps to restore Voldemort's body using Harry's blood. During the process, Harry's parents' spirits appear to him and offer him support and encouragement. Voldemort finally regains his full physical form, and his Death Eaters celebrate their triumph. Voldemort challenges Harry to a duel, but as the two wizards engage in battle, Harry's wand reacts in a way that surprises both him and Voldemort. Priori Incantatum occurs, causing the ghosts of Voldemort's past victims to emerge from his wand and give Harry a chance to escape. 
Harry grabs Cedric's body and uses the port key to return to Hogwarts, where he is met by Dumbledore and other members of the school. Harry is devastated by Cedric's death and the knowledge that Voldemort has returned, but he tells Dumbledore everything that happened in the graveyard. The Ministry of Magic refuses to believe Harry's story and accuses him of lying, claiming that Voldemort cannot possibly have returned. The Ministry attempts to discredit Harry and Dumbledore, but many members of the wizarding community including the Weasleys and Hermione, believe Harry and support him. The chapter ends with Dumbledore revealing to Harry that his wand had been using the same core as Voldemort's wand, which explains the unusual priori incantatum effect. Dumbledore also reveals that he believes Harry's account of what happened in the graveyard and that they must now prepare for a war against Voldemort and his followers. Chapter 23 of Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire is titled The Yule Ball. The chapter begins with Harry struggling to come to terms with Cedric's death and the return of Voldemort. Despite his grief and anxiety, Harry attends the Yule Ball with Parvati Patil, while Ron attends with Padma Patil and Hermione with Victor Krum. The ball is a grand affair, and the Great Hall is transformed into a winter wonderland. Harry, Ron, and Hermione are stunned by the elegance of their dates and the event as a whole. However, the evening does not go entirely smoothly for the trio. Ron is jealous of Hermione's time spent with Victor Krum and becomes increasingly irritable as the night wears on. Meanwhile, Harry finds it challenging to dance and socialize, feeling out of place in the formal setting. After the dance, Harry and Ron have a heated argument, with Ron accusing Harry of not understanding how difficult it is for him to see Hermione with Victor Krum. The argument ends with Harry and Ron not speaking to each other. The chapter ends with Harry reflecting on the events of the evening and his friendship with Ron. He realizes that their argument was due to both of them being emotionally drained and that he needs to find a way to help his friend through his jealousy and insecurities. Chapter 24 of Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire is titled Rita Skeeter's Scoop. The chapter begins with Harry and Ron still not speaking to each other after their argument at the Yule Ball. However, their attention is soon diverted when they discover an article in the Daily Prophet written by the tabloid journalist Rita Skeeter. The article accuses Harry of being attention-seeking and implies that he made up the story of Voldemort's return for personal gain. Hermione is outraged by the article and suspects that Skeeter has used illegal means to obtain her information. Hermione takes matters into her own hands and goes to visit Rita Skeeter, pretending to be interested in becoming an intern for the Daily Prophet. Hermione manages to sneak into Skeeter's office and discovers her secret. Skeeter is an unregistered animagus who can transform into a beetle. Hermione confronts Skeeter about her article and threatens to expose her if she does not retract the false information about Harry. Skeeter reluctantly agrees, and the article is retracted in the next issue of The Daily Prophet. The chapter ends with Harry, Ron, and Hermione reconciling and realizing that their friendship is more important than any argument or jealousy they may experience. They vow to continue supporting each other and preparing for the coming war against Voldemort and his Death Eaters. Chapter 25 of Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire is titled The Egg and the Eye. 
The chapter begins with Harry struggling to figure out how to get past the dragon in the first task of the Tree Wizard tournament. He confides in Cedric's advice to take a bath with the egg and discovers that when he does so, he can hear a message that is hidden within the egg. The message is a clue to the next task, to retrieve something from the bottom of the Black Lake. Harry tries to figure out how to breathe underwater, but none of the spells he tries seem to work. One day, Harry is caught by Professor Moody, who shows him an object that he calls the unforgivable curses, which are illegal to use. Moody teaches Harry how to resist the imperious curse, one of the three unforgivable curses. Harry, Ron, and Hermione continue to research ways to breathe underwater and discover that there is a spell called Jilly Weed that can help them. They manage to get the Jilly Weed from Professor Snape's storage room and use it to successfully complete the second task. The chapter ends with Harry receiving a mysterious package containing a wand that he does not recognize. He has no idea who sent it or why, but he knows that he needs to be careful and not let anyone else know about it. As we bring part five of Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire to a close, the story has taken a darker and more dangerous turn. The Triwizard Tournament has revealed its most shocking secrets, and the threats surrounding Harry are becoming undeniable. The tension is building, and the stakes have never been higher. Thank you for joining us through these spellbinding chapters. But don't stop here. The most thrilling and heart-stopping moments are yet to come. Stay tuned for the next part, where Harry's journey continues and the true danger reveals itself. If you've missed any of the adventure so far, be sure to check out our playlist for Harry Potter books 1, 2, and 3, as well as the previous parts of Goblet of Fire. And for even more magical and adventurous tales, download the Audiotion app for access to audiobooks across all genres. The link is in the description below. Until next time, remember, in the wizarding world, things are never quite as they seem, and darkness is always lurking just beneath the surface.